Hey guys, my name is Reginald Jackson. I am a cartoonist and part-time traditional artist. Some of you may know me from my YouTube shorts and live streams I do every Saturday. But this is the first time I'll be doing my first sketchbook tour. You guys let me know if you want to see me do more of these in the near future. And I can definitely share more than ones that I've done. So, this particular sketchbook here, I got this around, I think, August, September of 2023. And last I stopped working was earlier in March of this year. But I mainly use this for my inkover drawings, which you'll see in just a little bit. So, to get started, I really didn't do much when I first got into this book. Mainly, for the most part, it was just mainly just like small like little headshots, like little duels you can see here. I tend to do a lot of headshots whenever I do a lot of my, um, when I do a lot of my warm-ups. Some more doodles here, just some more faces, like here's a little dog here I did. You know, here's some swirls. Here I started to get a little more experience, I started to do more of some little bit of shapes. And part of the reason I hadn't really done much, you know, initially in this book was, um, I had a lot of things going on at the time, you know, like, you know, first course, you know, I was working my day job. On top of that, I was preparing for a big trip with my family that around that summer. So that took up a lot of period of my time, you know, as far as actually, like, taking out time to actually draw. You know, here's Groundskeeper Willie right here. There's a couple of notes here and there. Now, some of the notes I've covered up, you know, the personal information, so there's that. 2021, that's something I wrote for a whole another video that I had done. Just a couple more duels and headshots here. Here I was had some praying pencils I had got. I was testing out to see how they work. Just to make sure they look good. Here's where I get things a little interesting. I think this I did um, probably in late September. Here I was kind of doing some sketch of Animaniac characters, but I tried redrawing them in like, different styles. So I did one of Yakko here, I did one of Ralph, Nurse. Norita from the reboot. So I drew a couple of the characters here. Just did a few more headshots here. Just some more notes. So this portion of the sketchbook is where I have my Inktober drawings. Now, for this one, this kind of represents how the sketch was pretty much looked for a good majority of that late summer is that it was pretty much untouched. I hadn't really touched it. You know, because I was work working on another sketch at the time. And plus, I was really unsure at the time if I was going to be able to finish the um, challenge or not because I was so busy. So I thought I'd do one called Dusty, where pretty much it was just all my arbors were kind of sitting unused for that past couple of months. So that was something pretty simple to kind of get things started. The next one I did was um, Profile, so I decided to get a little more adventurous, you know, with the um, pen and some markers. So I did the side profile, something I don't really do that often. Third day, you know, was a little more, got a little more adventurous. I draw Ray Parker Jr. You know, of course, you know, the guy did Ghostbusters. He also did a lot of other stuff too. You know, he had his own band, Radio. He even did Solo, did a couple of other hits. I think, what's some of the other hits? I think, um, The Other Woman, that's one. A Woman Needs Love Just Like You Do. Dude's a really great um, artist, great singer, great songwriter, killer guitarist. I definitely recommend checking his stuff out. Then is those keys. Now these are actually sw modeled slightly off my um, my actual keys. One, I think one is from car keys from the new car that I'd gotten at that time. That was that. Then I drew um, Patrick Starr. And this time I started experimenting with a lot more um, color. See, normally when I start out, I tend to do stuff that's more like in black and white, you know, red, just kind of get things going. But once I got a good feel going, then I started playing some color in here. A very sketchy hand. Just some more duels on the side. Grill. I'll be honest, I don't really see these two as much anymore. I know there are definitely some rappers and artists that still do them nowadays. But to my knowledge, they're not as big as they used to be, you know, back in, like, say, like, early to mid-2000s. But I don't know, maybe. Here, now here's where things really start getting really fun. It was like around like day eight. Cause then I started getting a lot more elaborate with the pictures I was doing. So here's like a recreation of um classic Simpsons bit. Day eight warning. Your officer already says it's your last warning about that. Any classic Simpsons fans out there, you'll probably recognize the scene right away. Then we had um 
day nine, which is fire, it's fire, and this is a scenario where a guy's laying on a fire ash track, and it's literally setting equipment on fire. <laughs> so there was that. And day ten was um fortune cookie, so but instead of actual like sayings and proverbs to loosely follow, here we got actual stuff that was living an actual fortune. So I thought that'd be a nice like little visual gag. This one, now this one really blew up on Instagram when I posted it. So this one, this was based on a lot of old Tom and Jerry shorts. So it features two owners, feature one from the really old ones, Mrs. Two Shoes. Well, technically she was called Mammy Two Shoes, but I prefer to call her Miss Two Shoes. She was the kind of one that was really bossy and mean towards Tom. And then there was a one they had later on, I think in the 60s one by Gene Deitch, where he was bossy, but he was more ang angry, he was very violent, sadistic. The only thing with him is that where she, at most she was very bossy, like he was very sadistic and mean-spirited. And now he's like draws to near where if they two ever, ever met up, I have a feeling that she would not talk the way like he would um, treat Tom. And a lot of people really liked that one, but that one was pretty fun. This one was also really fun too. This one I did with um, this is a character Guy Fieri, and that one is kind of like a burger that has like three different peppers, you know, chili pepper, habanero pepper, jalapeno pepper. I think one of the pepper too. I forgot. And I figured, I figured he said, "Oh, now that's hot stuff," because that's pretty figures to be something in line what he would say. Day three ride. You know, since we're in Halloween season. Of course, I did a spooky themed one. This one was a zombie rising out from his grave, scaring the hell out of some grave robbers here. This one I did, just some more dudes on the side. This one is um Castle. This was a castle of Cagliostro from the um the Lupin movie of the same name. Lupin Castle of Cagliostro. I actually didn't tell him putting the on the bell tower right here, but unfortunately I thought. You know, the competition would get a little too crass, so I decided not to put it. Plus, I wanted to have the mounts in the background. Now, part of the reason you're seeing a little bit of that red here is that, um, I had forgotten, I forgot I was drawing directly on this page, because the next one that you're about to see ended up bleeding onto this one, so that's what you're pretty much about to see. So, round the back of this one, just totally by accident. Day 15 was, um, a crossword pick I did with, um, Futurama and, um, Simpson Kendrick sort of playing a band, you know, Fry's auditioning, doing a song from Limp Biscuit. I came into the future as a preacher, look into these eyes. <laughs> so that was that. That was pretty fun to work on. So I used three colors for this one. Day 16, so I do another like Simpson character. So I have him diving on another guy, you know, Rick Sanchez, Rick and Morty surfing. Honestly, this is my personal favorite one so far because this one I decided to kind of go out go out of my comfort zone experience in different designs. I want to have this rough, like very sketchy like look to it. Personally, this is my personal favorite of the ones I did for this month. So that so that turned out good. Day 17, it was punk, and I decided to do um Hobie from Into the Spider-Verse. You know, someone who really loved that movie, but also someone who likes um like old school punk music like Bad Brains or Moans. I always dug that kind of stuff, so it was going to be a matter of time before I did this guy, so that was a lot of fun. Then of course, you know, the next day I did The Devil, this, this case of The Devil from The Cuphead Show. I need to get around to finishing and watching that show, because I'm um, like, I think I was in the middle of watching season two, but I ended up not finishing it. But I recall, I remember really liking it, so I'll definitely finish it up one of these days. You know, day 19, it was, um... Asterix and Obelisk from the um, comics. If anyone, if anyone hasn't read the um, comics or checked the series, I definitely recommend it. They're really fun. They're pretty funny. Um, so for day 20, this was Amanda's Door. This is actually loosely based off a song. It was originally by, I think it was by the Paralo Paralograms. It was a reggae group. No, actually, um, I'm trying to remember. No, it was Paralograms. It was covered from an old reggae group, but it got covered by um, Electronic Loop Massive Attack. I really dug like their moody cover, so I wanted to kind of draw something to kind of like capture that mood that song has. Such a great one. Day 20 was on um, Baby Shower, and this was actually coincide, you know, with my older sister. 
she would usually do for a baby like later on that winter. So we held a baby shower for her. So I decided to do one in a more literal sense. Now, of course, since I got a lot busier during that week, I started keeping it a lot more simple. So day three was scratching. So I started doing a lot of retro scratching. You know, I talked being pretty busy throughout my month, but I was also pretty sleepy because a lot of times like, I would kind of fall asleep when I was at work or I was at home, so that was kind of happening a lot. <laughs> day 24, it was pet walking. So in this day, I started doing another crossover with two characters, um, Jasper and Horace from 101 Dalmatians and um, Medusa and Sluice from The Rescuers. Part of the reason I'm kind of crossing those two together because apparently um, for that movie, The Rescuers, it was actually going to have on um, Crow DeVille in that one instead of having a whole new character. So I thought that would be kind of neat to kind of actually bring those two ideas back together. And for day 25, it was um, an action show. In this case, it was Shaft. This was also kind of a tribute piece to um, the guy who played Shaft, Richard Roundtree. So I want to do this as a kind of a groovy, like, hip tribute to him. I just chose some garlic. I tend to use this a lot in my cooking, especially when I'm cooking meats. Day 27 was party favors. This was a nerd cross piece with Grunkle Stan, you know, Krusty the Clown. I figured I'd draw a scenario, you know, where basically it's after a huge, like, birthday party. It was a wild one, as you can see. And, you know, he's paying some favors for coming out. Day 28, this one's called Surprise. So I drew a scenario where um, basically like Yakko and Wacko from Iron Man's, they run to um, the original character on the show, Hello Nurse, and they see you know what she's been up to. You know, now that she's no longer a nurse, she's also a mother now with a kid. And this is their reaction. And we're almost done, done here pretty soon. Day 29, this one's Spaghetti Western. So this one I kind of did in more of a literal sense, you know, Spaghetti Western. Also with a double meaning, you know, part of the term Spaghetti Western comes out is that um, these were based on West films filmed by Italian actors or directors. So I decided to feature two like Italian characters from that show. Yeah, I'm aware it's kind of a corny joke, but that was the idea. So there's that. Day 30 was called on Rush. So this is based on the number of times I've had to kind of rush in the store like right before it was closing and you know, kind of get some last minute things. And also, day 31, which was the very last one, this was on um, Hall, in this case, a Halloween candy hall. So I figured I have one, you know, of Bar you know, Barney and Homer Simpson, Homer Simpson's dressed as a genie. And this is kind of a slight reference to um, his voice setter, Dan Castanel, voicing on um, the genie from Aladdin, you know, in a TV series. And then back when you got um, characters like Ed and Nettie dressed in their Halloween outfits. So yeah, those are the, um, Inktober drones I actually did like for that month. So it was a pretty fun challenge. So afterwards, I really don't have much after after that, just some more doodles. I'll get that here it is, Inktober 2023. So that's something I drew for like a YouTube short and video I ended up doing like that year. Just some more random sketches, just some notes. Here's a draft for another one I'm drawing I'm doing later on that winter. In fact, you'll probably see that coming up. So here were just more like thumbnail sketches. More rough drawings. I think some I did some like Santa Claus. I think I did that for another drawing I never finished. Just some more notes. Just some more rough drafts. Some more doodles. You know, just some markers I had gotten. I decided to test those out. Some more extra sketches. Some more doodles. Oh, here we go. So here's the um the other big picture I did. So this one was called Crowd Control. So basically, I wanted to do like a whole like panoramic like concert piece. So what I did is I kind of drew this whole scene where I had like almost like over 20 or 20 different like cards characters there. So you can see you got Yakko in there, you got Broken Stan, you got the Coyote, you got Cat Dog in there too. And why I drew this like traditionally, I ended up coloring this whole thing individually, but this put a, took a long time to put together, but I'm really proud of how well, you know, it turned out. So I really, there was that. Also some more doing I did with some like like some markers and some ballpoint pen. Just some more doodles here. This was, and it got a little more sporadic too because at this point I already moved on to a new sketchbook. So this is more stuff I did throughout the winter of that year. Some of the stuff I did later on in on that spring. Just some more rough sketches here. Just some more notes. 
Some more notes here. Here's one I did kind of like of um, Vincent Van Gogh. Because I was looking at a lot of his work as of lately. Just some more, some more abstract stuff. Just something I did with some large like felt tip markers. I think these I did in the spring. I think I did in the spring. Because I hadn't touched touches them while I thought I, I filled some more of these pages. I did that. Yeah, because here's something I did of um the spear. For those who don't remember the spear, he was an old school like detective from these comics from back in the day. Um Will Eisner, he did the um did those comics. And I picked up one of the, uh, his books, you know, at the um, half price bookstore. So I did some some sketches based on you know, like old old comics. Those are pretty fun. Just some more pencil marks. Here's some old pastels that I got. And that was pretty much it. I think there's a few like empty pages in here, but yeah, that was pretty much it. So guys, I hope you all enjoy your know, sketchbook tour. You know, let me know if you guys want me to see me do another one. And I hope to see you all again another time. Thank you. Have a great day.